Ah, you're doing me old China. It's time for a character profile on Danny Baldwin. No, that's gone, that's that's Australian. gone Australian. Danny Baldwin, so it is. Governor? I, yeah. I definitely can't do that one. It's not It's not up there with my best accents, but I gave um, it a go. It's the, it's the taking part, isn't it, really? It is, it is. Um, so we're going to do, we're going to talk about Danny Baldwin, our classic character profile this week, because, because he's been in Doctor Who, hasn't he? Um, Bradley Walsh. Yeah. He's been, he's been on one of the most watched TV shows in the UK um, in the past couple of months, so we thought it'd be a good idea to have a look at the character he played in Corrie. Um, I'm sure we'll get a bit of Doctor Who chat in there as well, and maybe if there's a quote later, another attempt at my awful Cockney um, accent. My grandma is rolling in her grave. I know, I know. I was thinking of your, your grandma. We could have we could have wheeled her in, and she could have done it for us. But alas, she's no more. She would love this podcast. She didn't. She didn't. Well, she she never watched. Co- she only watched Coronation Street when my granddad was alive. And as soon as he died, nobody in my family watched it again because it was too depressing. <laughs> That's gonna what's gonna happen when but, I die, isn't yeah, it? <laughs> well, no, it reminded everybody of him. So. Um, she obviously did watch it though, so I wonder if she would have had any insight or. I'm sure she would have it. had some opinions about things. She, yeah, she, we probably would have had to use the bleep quite a lot. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's let's have a look at Danny Baldwin then. Um, he was born on the 20th of May 1960, and his parents were Mike Baldwin and Viv Baldwin. Um, he had he had a couple of half brothers, Mark Redman and Adam Barlow. We know who he is. He's still living at large in Curry at the moment. <laughs> they say in London I don't know no I don't know I don't know I don't watch EastEnders just because I'm a southerner doesn't mean I know doesn't mean (laughs) I'm involved with London he got married twice once to Carol Baldwin in 1979 I don't know what her maiden name was anyway and he was also married to Frankie Baldwin as well 1986 women only have like a temporary name as we know before they're married off not you oh no He's got two children, <laughs> Jamie Baldwin, who was born in 1980, and then Warren Baldwin, 1986. I don't remember Warren at all. I, I, was he in it? He was, yeah, he I was, in it, was in it for a little bit. Yeah, he, well, I don't think Warren lasted long. He was in like 60 episodes Good old Frankie. I love Frankie Baldwin. She Frankie was great. Was brilliant. Um, Danny was first in the show, in the first in Corrie, on the 31st of May 2004, and then he finished off on 31st of December 2006. So a couple of, couple of years on Corey before I would love disappearing to see him back. off. I think it'd be great to have him back because of Adam. I, I've kind of forgot. I know. Well, we'll talk about that later. Sorry. I've got my schedule, Gemma. All right. Don't talk about I'm returns not going yet. To, um, interrupt you anymore. You can do the whole thing yourself. No. He was in 391 episodes, <laughs> and as we said, he was played by Bradley Walsh. Did you know, Gemma, that Bradley Walsh was a professional football player? before he became right. an actor. Into, I know, I didn't know that. Well, I think I knew it and then I've forgotten about it. He played for Brentford. So it, I don't know if there's any Brentford supporters listening, right. but I haven't even, I haven't even heard of that, um, that football team. He hasn't team, heard but... of lots of football teams. N- no, he was played true. for them when he was 18, but he had to give up after he had some ankle injuries. He did. He's Just like had. Gordon Ramsay. Did he do it as well? Gordon Ramsay was a professional football player. Oh, he was yeah. going to be one. Oh. Then he had some injuries and he had to give up. That's why he's so bloody buff, isn't it? I, I well, he is. I, don't know, I haven't seen. Um, so Walsh, well, Bradley, what are we calling him? Mr. Mr. Walsh? Can we call him Bradders? <laughs> Bradders, Bradders, yeah. That's what we call Jenny, though, isn't it? Jenny Bradley. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm saying, for the purposes of this section, don't Bradders. be confused. When we say <laughs> not, Bradders, we don't not gonna mention not going to mention her at all, probably. Probably not. Um, he didn't just go on to... He didn't go straight to TV. He became an apprentice jet engineer at Rolls-Royce. He was really, like... He was going Ambitious. for greatness, wasn't he? Yeah, first professional footballer, then an apprentice jet engineer. And, um, well, then he became a Pontins blue coat. So a little bit... You know. Well, I'm not going to say that it's prestigious as being a jet engineer. I'm not going to say it's certainly prestigious nothing as wrong. being a red coat. But what is a blue coat? Well, no, I guess it's just I've somebody. Pontins. I guess it's just somebody who stands on the stage and does like you know light entertainment. Um, you know, warms the crowd up. Does My comedy can, stuff. Can afford to go I've never on been these to anything of... like yeah, that. Yeah, but we can afford to go on these kind of things. Yeah. Everyone else acts like. You've been to I'm Centre Park. I went You've to Centre Park because I was a grown adult and I paid for my own way. I didn't. We never went to Pontins or Butlins when I was a kid. Well, Couldn't afford it. That's an experience we both missed. We still got a chance, haven't we? We could do it. Is Pontins still around? I don't even know. Anyway, he did some stand-up comedy there. He then moved into TV presenting, including The Wheel of Fortune. And I used to watch Wheel of Fortune, and I assume I must have watched him on it. We, I don't even think that. I mean, that program doesn't go on anymore, does it? It's, they, but game shows like that. I think it's still very popular in America and, and, and they're still like oh, they still going on and on them. and on week after week. But 
well, our, our kind of it? fun family game shows just kind of turned into no. the tense. Um, no. Like after Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, yeah. game shows aren't fun anymore, are they? They're yeah, you like... don't know though because they're all on when children's TV used to be on. Are they? Oh, yeah, I there's loads know. of them. There's loads of them. We don't know anything about it because oh, we don't well. watch television at that time. He did. He did his Wheel of Fortune, and then in two, it wasn't until two thousand that he started acting, and that was crazy. That sounded crazy to me. It's only like. He'd only been acting for four years before he came into Coronation Street. Um, he'd been in he'd been in the Lock Stock TV series um, first, where he played a violent psychopath. Um, he did another soap on ITV called Night and Day, which I've got no memory of any, of that. I don't know. If, I remember Night and Day? No. No, oh, my heart my belongs to Eldorado. <laughs> um, and it was in 2004, in late 2004, no, it must have been early 2004, he was um, in pantomime when um, he was offered the job to, to come into Corrie, so that was pretty cool. He was originally going to be called Vic, the character, Vic Baldwin, but then um, Bradders. It would have been early 2004, so maybe that's he was a... still in January yeah. doing panto stuff. Yeah, that's what I think. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, he, he, Bradley asked the producers if he could rename the character um, Danny after his dad, who recently passed away. What so an interesting idea. I know, I know. Interesting stuff. This is just fact after fact, isn't it? So let's have a look, see what see what Danny Baldwin got up to in his life then. Um, he, he, before 2004, we don't know a major amount about his life, partly because um, the whole, this kind of arm of the Baldwin clan is a little bit of a retcon so to fit So he's Mike this. Baldwin's son? Yes. But he didn't know he had a son? Yes, this this was all a bit retconned please, in. Please explain this. Until two thousand and four, Mike Baldwin did not mention having um, a brother called Harry. In fact, it was very clearly stated a number of times that Mike was an only child. Um, his Mike's dad was called Frankie as well, which is another confusing <laughs> element to this. So, um, yeah, two thousand and four because it, it was all the time when when Johnny Briggs was um, wanting to leave Coronation Street, so they brought in the rest of the Baldwin clan to, as, a, as a big builder for Mike's exit. So they invented him a, a brother, Harry, with no explanation about why he's not been mentioned before. And um, Harry had previously thought that Danny oh. was his, but actually his wife Viv had had an affair with Mike, because he was a bit of a Roman, which I'm finding out on classic Coronation Street at the moment. Um, he... We don't have a we don't have a continued antagonist anymore. It's sad. Tracy Barlow. She's not though, is she? You're supposed to feel sorry for her. A little bit. Um, a little bit. <laughs> Danny gave um, Frankie, who was a lot younger than uh, him, a job as a babysitter for Jamie. I'd forgotten about this as well. So Danny had Danny had his son Jamie, got Frankie the babysitter, and then he had his wicked way with her. The dirty old man. What a and he was job. he was married to Carol at that time as well. Not for long. So Frankie gave birth to Warren and then they got married. But then he cheated on her and he left her. There was lots of cheating and getting back together and everything in Danny's life. So Frankie, life. what? What? Frankie was his babe was, was a babysitter. Then they yeah. had an affair and then Frankie gave birth to Warren. Yeah, which is Danny's And then they son. got married and then he, they, he cheated on Frankie and then Frankie left. Yes. Him. I'm really keeping up with this. I know, considering yeah, consider this was all like retconned in, they did make they didn't make it want to make it easier, did they? No, it's not the sort of thing that you can just explain in a scene either, is it? <laughs> no. Um, so it was too Although, oh, this is on. the thing, right? How many times have you been at some kind of family gathering or been prepared for a family gathering and somebody said, by the way, blah, 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 blah. Your mum was always telling me like, oh, guess what? <laughs> blah, blah, like all about... Very, I'm not going to say, <laughs> but various members of the family. I, I, I my got, dad's side I got, of the family. Uh, no, I got photo albums and I got annotated stories. You? Oh you yeah, you probably know more about my family history uh, thanks to my mum than I do. Mm. You have to I'm going to write a you book. You have to pass it on. Um, <laughs> right, so yeah, he moved to Weatherfield. In but what I'm saying is, what? what I'm saying is, having somebody just do an info dump about the, the family status of somebody is totally plausible, but yet they never seem to do it on Coronation <laughs> Street. <laughs> Right, 2004. Can I say, right, so he comes to Weatherfield because Mike's in a bit of a pickle at Underworld, he needed a bit of help, so Danny came up from London to, to give him a bit of a... Kick up the arse. Yeah, with that. Can I say that? Um, yeah, that's fine. He had a fling with Sunita, um, who didn't realise that Danny was still married, and then not long after that, Frankie comes up from London, wanted to give their marriage another go. 
I don't think she's very happy with um, the idea of living, living in Weatherfield. She, she's like used to, I don't know whether they had a nice house in Cheshire or something like this. Or... I thought they lived in London. Oh yeah, that's not the same place, is it? Chelsea. I don't know geography. You're that's what I'm thinking of. Chelsea. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and she, uh, her sons come and they're like grown men, aren't they? Well, no. That, well, Warren was like 14 or so at that point. But um, what's the other one called? Jamie. Jamie. He, 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 he was, was all like, grown up. Yeah, he was, so they're not little kids. No. Um, Sunita obviously a bit miffed by all this. They buy um, number seven you from Blanche. You wait fall downstairs and die. 2005, speaking of dying, that was when Harry died. So Danny's dad, Mike's brother. Um, and then uh, Viv came up to, to Weatherfield for a little bit, um, the, the, the wife. So Danny looked after her for so a bit. I just got and, a question. Oh, what? In 2004, yes. when he came to help Mike out in Underworld, was he like, oh, it's me, your nephew? Yes. Okay. Yes. This is gonna be, this is like Ashley, isn't it? Because Ashley, for the first few years of Coronation Street, it was like Uncle Fred. And what's the other guys? Oh, this happened to. Who's the one who's in The Shining? Um, in The Shining, Jack yeah. Nicholson. Yeah. It's, um he wasn't raised by his real. I think it was his sister. Was he's his not mom. a Coronation Street character. I know he's not, but w- <laughs> look, wait and see. Who think, will, knows think. what will happen in the future? Well, they do need a new um, post feeling villain, don't they? I think he'd fit right in there. He's probably a bit old now. I think he just wants to drink and have women around. <laughs> so, um, yeah, Viv, Viv's there um, in, in Coronation Street and she reveals the truth to Danny about Mike being his actual dad. Shocker. What? But this is even more of a shocker, God, Gemma. Danny starts having an affair with Leanne Battersby. What? I know, Leanne. He likes the younger women, this Danny, doesn't he? He doesn't. <laughs> she, was 20, she was 20 years younger than him, but he thought he'd have a go anyway. Um, I can't imagine having and also, anything in common with somebody who's 20 years... I mean, I know it would be legal at this point, I'd <laughs> longer. I need to be at least 40 before I think that it's, it's not going to be disgusting. <laughs> but even so, a 20... What would I say? So, is Justin Bieber still a thing? <laughs> <laughs> um, this was even more shocking. The Anne was engaged to Jamie at the time. So he started oh, yeah. having an affair with his son's fiance. Shocking, lots of sneaking about going on there. Now, Frankie started to notice that Leanne was acting a little bit suspiciously, so she finds out about the affair when she picked up Leanne's phone. Can I ask you a question? Yes. As, was Leanne still chavvy at this point? Um, was this chavvy Leanne, or was this... Mm, probably. ...reformed Leanne? I mean, I, I think in between where she is at the moment. She wasn't okay. a responsible Po-faced. mother uh, as she is at the moment. This is still, like, eight eight years into Leanne's tenure you on say, Coronation You say responsible, I say po-faced. Um, she, was, she was a bit more grown up. Um, she was okay. like, she was in her early 20s, She's, ma- she's mature enough for Danny. So anyway, Frankie <laughs> picks up Leanne's phone. With his, that fra- um, and, and, and Frankie's a girl, remember? Really. Yes. Confusing to me. <laughs> it's so more confusing. So Danny starts talking sexy talk to her, thinking it's Leanne he's talking to, but oh. actually it's not, it's Frankie, isn't it? Oh so dear. Frank, she's like, no, don't tell Jamie, please. And she doesn't. Uh, but she does tell Jamie that his dad's been having an affair with somebody. Oh, yeah, that's always a good Drama way to in the prolong it, isn't it? Carol, then, uh, if you remember that, yeah. and Danny's ex-wife, she's been kind of on and off of the street during 2005, since spring. She finds out about the affair from Frankie, and she's the one that exposes it to Jamie. So we have Bins Leanne kicks it no. to the curb. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Um, Leanne and Danny move in together. They go to the flat that's um, you know, above Prima Donna at the How moment. How romantic. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that, I, I don't know what it was at the time. I don't know whether that was when it was the hardware. <laughs> Excuse me, that was a little burp. <laughs> I'm so sorry. You're horrible. I just had a bit of lemonade before I started recording the section of the that. podcast. <laughs> that's really bad. <laughs> Never mind. At least your stomach's not going this time. The cat's not purring. Yeah. And it's not it's, raining for once. And there hasn't been any traffic uh, disturbances. Well, for, uh, yes, anyway. Um, anyway, so Leanne and Dan... Oh, there's a car just going past right now. No, just I've, be quiet. This, I've just gone right off track. Stop drawing attention those. to everything. Sorry. Where, where are you? Anyway, <laughs> they're living above Prima Donna. Danny and his, and his young floozy, Leanne Battersby. Um, it's around the mid to late 2005 that the Baldwin start to realise that Mike is getting a bit forgetful. They're worrying that he's developing Alzheimer's. He is. This is Johnny Briggs' exit storyline. Um, Danny discovers an engagement ring in Mike's desk drawer because um, Mike was going to propose to Penny King, who was <laughs> the wife of a another factory yeah. boss who also died. It's all coming out now. I know. So he's like, oh, I don't want Mike to get married and leave everything to Penny and Adam in, in his yeah. will, so I'm going to um, look after this ring, actually. Can I ask you a question? What was going on in our lives in 2005? 
Um, Don't make a loud noise like that. Um, well, I guess that we were... Were we here? No, we hadn't been moved into were this we place. We were living house? in your mum and dad's house, I think. Because I, well, I remember watching uh, what happened to... Mike. Mike with you. Yeah, you were. I know, but I'm just... Oh, oh. I'm placing it in my mind. Oh, thank you. Would you Would you like to do a, do a quick rundown for 2006 then? Danny's final year on the street. Right. So, in 2006, Leanne and Danny became Mike's main carers as his condition deteriorates. Traffic. But Danny's main aim is to gain control of Mike's estate. Yeah, he was, he was trying to get Sneaky. all of Mike's money. Well... Well, trying to get stop Adam from getting it. This, I think you're right about why it'd be good to have Danny back at the moment. Yeah, because, it would um, do, because he's like... Finagling. Nice bit of antagonism there. So, w- was, did Mike know that he was his son? When did you find out that? I did, yeah, that was that ages was ago. that was ages ago. Okay, it's old news. Old news now. Um, Danny gets the power of attorney and manipulates Mike into naming him sole um, heir of of his will. But he feels guilty about it, but he does it anyway. You don't get points for. Well, he starts. He, he does start to feel bad about the fact that Mike is clearly deteriorating fast thanks mm. to his uh, his Alzheimer's, and he gets. He gets um, pneumonia, doesn't he? It, Mike starts wandering off places. Yep. It? And obviously Alzheimer's isn't, isn't going to kill you because you can have Alzheimer's for ages. But he, um, I think they took him to hospital for some reason. That, or then he went wandering out the streets in the middle of the night, got pneumonia. Um, he died in, in um, Ken's arms. He did, he did. He won- wandered onto the street. That he'd won Deirdre back. Oh, that was such a sad moment. And you were like, Gemma, this is so significant. And I'm like, I don't get it. <laughs> but now I do. Now I you can totally look back on it. that memory and go, that was very poignant. It was totally poignant. <laughs> um, so, yeah, not Mike Danny dies. Danny, well. Danny was not happy about this. <laughs> <laughs> you know how it is. Well, I mean, he's got. I mean, he's not he's happy in a way, but he's, he's, he's oh, inherited gosh. Mike's. He breaks up longer. with Leanne, who's now his fiance, and he decides to get back with Frankie. More, well, he wants to get back with Frankie. Then Leanne finds a more recent will that leaves everything to Adam and she tries to use it to blackmail Danny out of £100,000. Leanne, what a sneak. I can't believe it. Danny pays up, Leanne gives Adam the will anyway and then he or she... She. Who, <laughs> Can't you read my... Somebody awesome goes to... Well, Leanne well, goes off to Spain. Spain. Yeah, she's like, so long suckers. She's like, I can literally buy Spain with this. <laughs> <laughs> Danny <laughs> carries on. Well, that buys you a lot of cooked English breakfast on the Costa del Sol, I think. It does. <laughs> Not these days, though. Um, Danny carries on trying to woo Frankie back, but she he is disgusted to discover that she's been having an affair with Jamie. I think we all were, really. That because was a weird Jamie story. Jamie was his son, but although he is Frankie was uh, Jamie's stepmom. She was not his real mother. Well, no, but she had been his him. his um, babysitter. Remember. So he started having an affair with his babysitter and kind of mother figure in the family. That was a weird story. It will remember that as well. I remember everyone being very scandalised. Yeah, that. it's like, it's not quite incest, but it's, it's closest. It's still gross. <laughs> um, he sells, uh, Danny sells his share of the factory to Paul Connor. Remember him? That was when the Connors first came into the show. That's how the oh, Connors get their claws into the factory. Started. Paul Connor, alas, RIP. Yeah, rip. Um, he leaves to go and live in London and then we last see him watching fireworks with a new girlfriend in London telling Jamie he is glad to hear that he and Frankie have split up yeah he's a, he has a quite a happy ending really he, he goes off and then on the, uh, on the New Year's Eve episode um, he, he phones up uh, Jamie and he's there, there with his new bird on his arm fireworks in the background and he's like have a nice life, son. So yeah. It's a bit of a git, really yeah. I, I'd like to think that maybe they, um, they reconciled off screen but who knows? Who knows? Um, so do you what, what? What do you what do you remember about Danny Baldwin? Do you have like fond memories looking back on him? Yeah, I really liked him. I think Danny, um, what's his name? Is his name? Brad, Bradley, Brad, Bradley Walsh. Bradley Walsh is just a really charismatic actor. He's a really people love him, don't they? Because he's on yeah. everything. He's on Doctor Who, but he's also on lots of other TV shows he, as well. I mean, he's I, got when no I was time to do anything. When I went to look at a list of what other things that he's done since then, his his IDM, IMDb page is absolutely massive. It's a list as long as your arm. And sometimes he's playing himself. Sometimes, well, you know, sometimes he's presenting things. He's acting. He's done stage work. He does pantos. He's like he's one of these workaholics. Busy. I think busy, busy man. Yeah, busy, busy show, busy. I. I think I can't remember whether I particularly liked him at the time, I but looking I back, I think oh, God, I kind of like him to come back. In. Yeah, but I they think felt that they... listen, I loved the Baldwins, and I remember this at the time—the extended Baldwins, the mm. Cockney Baldwins—because 
I wasn't used to seeing anybody from anywhere near where I lived on Coronation Street. Everybody is from the north. Mm. And it was kind of fun when you get somebody from a different part of the country, even though I don't really associate with London. But still, the Cockney, I do associate with that. See, this is interesting as well, because obviously Mike Baldwin was from London. But I I don't even remember kind of linking him with London. Watching it... So I started watching Coronation Street when I was like 12 or so, and I didn't really know much about accents or anything then. So for me, growing up, he was just Mike Baldwin. He was just one of... You know, one of the Corrie cast. But then when this family came in, and it was like, hey, uh, gov- hey. governor. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Apples That's and pears, Mary Poppins. I was like, well, this, what, what are they doing here? They don't have any place in Coronation that Street. Dick Van Dyke's got a better Cockney accent than you. <laughs> um, I, yeah, so I, I didn't really think they fitted in, but you're absolutely right about, about him being very kind of charming. And when I picture him back, he's like, yeah, all big grin and you know, full of full of life and everything, yeah. full of jokes. But um, it, I think I in my head they're a little bit like the Mortons in that it was a family that was brought self-contained. in, self-contained. Yeah, very very self-contained. A couple of years, wham bam, thank you, ma'am, and then <laughs> off they go again. There was a little bit of that, um, and it's like, and the, and I don't know how much legacy those characters particularly have. I don't know. It was really like have a, any. a fun little couple of years that they had together. And it's almost been, like, wiped from my brain. I mean, I remember Mike Baldwin's death very, very clearly. That was one of the, yeah. the biggest deaths that, that I remember in Coronation Street. But even that, I don't particularly think of... Remember Danny's... The part that he played in it. Um, I liked Frankie Baldwin. I think I preferred her to, to Danny. Frankie was brilliant. I loved her so much because she reminded me of um, a friend of mine's mum, you know? The twins' mum. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because she was very... Common but glamorous. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say bolshy and shrill. <laughs> but yeah, you're right. <laughs> always glammed up, but always mouthing off. Yeah, yeah. I, I did think that the whole story with um, with her having a an affair with uh, with Jamie was a bit icky. <laughs> but, I, but I thought that she was great. She had, she, had, she had a load of personality. I was disappointed that after... Well, after Danny left, it wasn't too long before the rest of the Baldwins kind of petered out i think warren had probably already disappeared off to spain mind. maybe by then i think he went off to do some football in abroad um and yeah D- jamie and danny uh, frankie sorry hang, hung around for a, a year or two i guess after that and then they flitted off and that was you know the door closed on that extended branch of the baldwin family tree that was just invented so that johnny briggs could have some family around him during the he alzheimer's died, yeah. story um and i think it was good that that he did have somebody else there. Um, Alma had obviously um, w- was gone by then. Um, and it was... It, it made sense to have family around. And it was really, really tragic watching Mike deteriorate mm-hmm. and getting upset for forgetting everything. Like, I think the Christmas beforehand, he'd had um, all the Baldwins had had like a family dinner together and Mike had asked, um, oh, when's Harry coming to join us, whatever. And then there was like, yeah. your brother's dead, Mike. And then he had a sort of teary teary cry with jamie on the steps outside it was it was tragic stuff but yeah danny danny was uh, looking back i think i appreciate him now more than i did and i would be i'd be very happy for him to to come back in i think i don't think he's got very much legacy in the factory but he did usher in the connors didn't he which i think is a good thing Uh, i've been happy to have the connors and as part of it now speaking of living the factory Gemma um, one of the things that I do remember and I'm just getting up something here because Gemma I'm going to be quizzing Gemma now just for a change it is... it's usually no point because I don't know the answers no you might know some of the answers I might to know some of these answers so do you remember optimistic Danny yeah. one of the things that I remember is he used to have nicknames for all the characters in the factory a lot, a lot, the, of, the, a lot of the knicker stitches yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I'm not, that's, I remember that really clearly. That was one of his little quirks that's really stuck with me. And I, and I kind of wish that something like that would happen again. But it's probably a bit um, on PC now, some of them anyway. So I've got a list of some of them here. I'm going to say their nickname. Yeah. And you need to tell me which character this was. I'm not going to remember. Why not play along at home? The names of the people. You will. Well, I'll give oh, you an no. easy one to start with, Gemma. Who did he call Fuzz? Fizz. Yeah, so there we go. Yeah. One out of one so far. Okay, um, what about... Do you, want, do you want an easy one or a hard one? Just give me them. One? Okay, now this is the non-PC one. Mincemeat. Sean. <laughs> Correct. Me. Um, then we had uh, Legs. Was that 
Kelly Crab. Well done, you're, you're good. I mean, I'm going to start having to do current history for you. You remember no. more of this than you give yourself credit for. No, I've got three. Um, How many are there? There's, there's two more, maybe another one okay. that I remember, but so I didn't see it written down half, somewhere. Right. I think you might struggle with these ones. So, Lippy. Janice. Yes, it was Janice Battersby. Well done. Yes. Okay, last one that I've got for then. Bolshe. Oh, I don't know who that could be. Who else was working at the factory in that time? I don't remember. I really can't remember. Given? Yeah. That was Karen McDonald. Oh, and I didn't even remember she worked in the factory at all. Yeah, yeah. yeah she I thought she was a barmaid. Ah, uh, no, 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 she's factory. <laughs> she, she had a miscarriage in the factory. Um, yeah, well, so yeah, it's th- one of my most treasured memories. <laughs> I should have realised. She was at it was a Christmas party, I remember it well. Oh, yeah, so Lippy, Bolshe, Mincemeat, Legs and Fuzz. There might have been other. I've got a feeling that he had a nickname for Hayley. I don't think I'm make, making this up, but he used to call her, and here's an original one, Hales. Hales, what a great name. But I might be completely making that up. It could I don't have been know. worse. Yeah. So you did well there, Jen. Thank well you very done. much. I, I thought that Lippy and Bolshe might, um, you know, I, I can I can never remember which Bolshe, one of those is no, which. But Legs was um, Kelly Crabtree. Yeah. Love Kelly Crabtree. I know. We, we, did, we did a... Um, we, we have done, done a we, we did a character profile, profile years so ago. Cool. She was in, like, pre-100, I think, because we just yeah. wanted to talk about her. Um, so, I don't know what else we say about Danny, Danny Wilder. I think, I think it, in a way, there's a comparison to... Um, to Les Dennis being on Coronation Street because back when he got the job he'd done a little bit of TV this um, lock stock show but I think he was much better known as a stand up comedian and game show host and I I don't remember very much about it at the time but I imagine that there were some people saying well what's this Wheel of Fortune presenter doing onto Corey he's not an actor and that's exactly the same reaction as Les Dennis got wasn't it when he got the part as Michael Rodswell a few years ago I think if Bradley Walsh had entered Coronation Street at the time when Les Dennis did. He would have been had this, had been treated the same way that I think Les Dennis was by social media, which is to say disgracefully and disrespectfully. Yeah. Because the people would would not leave Les Dennis alone. We were always on his case and telling him he couldn't act and that he was terrible in the show. And he was brilliant. And he was one of the best characters in the show. I at loved the time. Michael he was at the time. Absolutely excellent. He was. And he loved Corey too, and I I just feel so sad that maybe his he soured on the show. I don't I'm you know I'm just speculating mm. because of the way he was treated by some I'm not going to call them fans, but you know what I mean. So mm. I think that um, Bradley Walsh uh, got the perfect time period because yeah. now if he comes back, nobody can throw that at him. No, and and he's done so much. He's done a and also I think he's got a bit. Of of, he's got quite a lot of street cred, doesn't he, Bradley Walsh? Because yes. he's on late night stuff he's on daytime stuff he's on doctor who he's on all kinds of mm. relevant shows for different audiences yeah, he's, whereas he's very more popular a with with certain family tv he, yeah exactly yeah. i mean the chase is a massive game show on itv isn't it? i don't know whether i've ever actually watched, an episode I've watched it, but... that sports show that's oh on, yeah he was on that was. he was on a panel show the other day that we watched I can't we remember love what panel was. shows well, we didn't know we didn't watch it we, we literally we flipped over it only have celebrities so we can put people on panel <laughs> shows in this country well, i haven't asked us to be i don't know if they don't understand um i just i wonder whether uh we get any other presenters making the switch to cory in the future i mean i hear that um Davina. And, oh my gosh if Davina could be on coronation street that'd be oh, amazing we know she can act as a zombie <laughs> i was thinking like aunt mcpartland's probably uh looking for a bit of work oh. at the moment and he's a uh, from no. the north <laughs> don't mention <laughs> aunt <laughs> but he did he came from acting as well though, didn't he he's he was in back or grove yeah he's much much better known as um as a presenter now him and deck but yeah they um and they also, first came into it as, as I think actors find they were rappers they were they were weren't they let's get ready to rumble I mean, watch there's, us wreck the mic watch us wreck there's the a mic. serious watch um, us wreck the mic psych, psych. there's a there's a there's a lack <laughs> of um and a newcastle accents on curry i mean it's all north to us isn't it i'm sure they're very How very far you? apart <laughs> um yeah i mean we, we had uh des barnes of course from uh, newcastle and, and there might have been a few others but you, know, you never know maybe if uh if times is really hard later we'll uh, we'll get to see those two on it um i didn't know this about uh bradley walsh he got a british soap award for best dramatic performance in 2006 that's pretty amazing just goes to show that that how much he was respected yep. and, and admired at the time that was all the time when um when mike baldwin died and um, well, his success is no mistake michael he's a talented man mm. um here's another fact i'm just reading fact. off Go the on, facts at the fact. moment bill tarmy yep. jack duckworth yep. told bradley to never let cory producers kill him off 
Um, so he had it written into his contract when they hired him that whenever his contract should end or whenever it was time to go, that the character would would be the, have the doors left open for them because Bill had said to, to, to Bradley, look, this could be your retirement nest egg. Don't you let them kill you off because you could come back to, to this if you, if you, you play your cards wrong. right. He, he wasn't wrong, he was wrong. he? Um, and since he left, there have been quite a few rumours about him coming back. There was one in... When did he leave? He left in 2006. There was one tabloid rumour in 2008 that he was going to come back and get involved with Carla. And I think I'd quite like to see that even now. What, that that would be quite a a dream team, I think, Danny Baldwin and Carla. I don't know whether she'd have much time for us ducking and diving. I think, do you know what? I don't think Carla's ever met her match in a romantic partner, do you? I think all of the people that she's she's gone out with have been, had a fatal flaw. Whereas I think Danny's is like maybe just being a bit of a cheat. Yeah, I mean, I can see her getting together with Danny and then... Um, but like... Him, I... him, him, him going off, off, getting off back with Leanne or something but again. But has she ever gone out with somebody who was her business equal? Well, Frank Foster, Tony you, Gordon. Do you, yeah, they but were they were boring. Uh, I, I, I they were boring think Tony Gordon case. had his moments. But okay, I, all right. I, th- I think no. I think that I think that might be quite good. But because uh, at the that, moment, that her happens. partners that she's got at the moment are always a bit well, sad and tragic, aren't they? Yes, and it is at the moment. Whoever it'd it be is. nice to see her with a real man. No <laughs> offense, Peter. No, he's got tattoos and everything, Gemma. What are you talking about? Um, this was funny. This this when it was rumored in two thousand and eight that he'd be coming back. Apparently, it was even confirmed on Bradley's own website that he was coming back to Coronation Street. So I don't know what happened there. Whether it was going to happen and then it fell through or or what. Um, and then in two thousand and ten, the rumor came up again. Um, oh, and this is where I've got the quote from him. So prepare yourselves. Why don't you just? Do I mean, it's a shame. One, it's a shame they've think. already filmed the new Mary Poppins movie because I'd be right out there. Yeah. He said. If the time is right for them and Danny Baldwin needs to go back and the time <laughs> is right is for me... from Helen Flanagan? Shut up. This is nothing like Helen Flanagan, go thank on, you very much. For, for If the time is right for me, where well, I've actually got some time to do it, because you can't just go in and do one, two or three... Oh, no. <laughs> you can't just go, go in and do and, one. <laughs> he, yeah, he's, um, he's getting the northern lingo all the time he's spending that. <laughs> you can't just go in and do one, two or three weeks. You have to really put your mind to it. The scripts come four months in advance, so the timing has to be absolutely right. I'm slipping into Australian again, aren't I? It's a bit like the alignment and the moon and the stars to get it right. So, if that came around somewhere later down the line, I'd love to go back, of course. It was a fantastic show and a great character. <laughs> Me old mucker. Apples and pears. Bro, Let's have our butchers. Bro, another shrimp on the barbie. <laughs> <laughs> he sounded exactly like that. I Brilliant. think you'll find when you listen to Why the recording of this, it'll be indistinguishable. Offer your services to play Danny Baldwin on the phone, on the end of the phone to Adam every now and then, whenever he needs to talk. <laughs> Why not? Uh, no, maybe not. Um, so he, as we say, he's gone on to do loads of TV since there. He was in the Sarah Jane Adventure, so that's quite interesting. He was in a Doctor Who spin-off before becoming in Doctor Who, and I saw that because I watched all the Sarah Jane Adventures, even though it was children's BBC. So that's a bit sad of me. No, it was his he, research. He played a scary clown in one, in a couple uh, of episodes. I think you'll I think. find that you don't need to put scary in front of a clown. He played a clown, an evil clown. They're all they're all evil and scary. He was in Law and Order UK, which I've never seen, but I no hear people say it's quite good. And who else was on um, Law and Order I UK? When? Who? Georgia Taylor. Georgia Taylor was in that with him. That's another and reason why we should go try and watch it. might remember that we teased this last week and we said, ooh, wait till you find out what Georgia called. Well, can you tell me in your best Georgia Taylor accent, Gemma? No. She's from Bristol, remember? I don't well, think she... I think she lives in Bristol right, now anyway. I don't think she's quite Here's my up. breast... My breast, my best Bristolian <laughs> accent. Sorry, right, can't He's see it on the phone. He's an absolute bugger. He's always cracking gags and making everyone laugh. Oh, you know, he was. He was always he was a right bugger, wasn't he? Oh, you right bugger. You are. <laughs> that is, as if, yeah, George sounds exactly like that. Yeah. Um. <laughs> well, you really know you need to do a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we wind up the old radio. <laughs> Don't know how we get it in, in the back of the woods. Well, he does. Uh, anyway, I like to drink my cider. That's the last time she comes on the podcast. Um, she, anyway, yeah. What did you? I can't remember what you said. No, yeah. She called him an absolute bugger because he was cracking gags and making everyone laugh. And then yeah. when the when action was called, he went completely deadpan and, and leaving everyone, everyone else, else still just... giggling. So that is a true professional. 
Bradley that is, not Georgia Taylor. Oh, it's coursing. <laughs> Terrible. Um, he's done The Chase, obviously. He's been doing that for, in, but, for nine years now, The Chase. I need to point something out. <laughs> Georgia Taylor's not the only person who said he does this. Isn't she? No, lots of he's got a reputation for being oh, I see. a bit of a comedian on set. Okay, fine. Yes. Um, and now he is in Doctor Who, playing Graham, one of the Doctor's many um, assistants. Um, let's just say what else he's done. The no, least... We're, we're, Boring. The one. least boring of the Doctor's new assistant. We'll come back to that in a second. He's he's also done music. He's Just released like two. Um, yeah, he's he's added to a couple of Rat Pack kind of albums, including 2016's Chasing Dreams, which got to number ten in the album charts in the UK. Can you believe this? It was the biggest debut album by the, a British artist that year. I know okay. all of these. Months, like, okay, fine. He's like. He got his hand in finger uh, in many Do you know pies. what? He's one of these people that you think he must have found a genie's lamp. I think you're right. I think you're right. Some people just everything they touch turns to gold. Yeah. And then here we are. Well, I think we've kind of um, we've, run, we've out of run out of steam on uh, Bradley Walsh and Danny Baldwin. But yeah, good character. I remember him a lot more fondly than I liked him at the time. I think he would be great. I think to, it'd be to great to put the cat amongst the pigeons. But I assume yeah. he's busy for the foreseeable future. I think you're right. But I don't it, think it certainly also, looks like think... he would come back if the time was right. So um, I don't think they can afford him either. <laughs> that could be very true. <laughs> 